Welcome back to New to Medical Device Sales. I am your host today. We have a special, special guest. I'm so excited to be bringing you our guest today. Today we have Adam Gunther. And Adam comes to us from our actual course. He is one of the people who did the course, was able to get two job offers in under six weeks, able to leverage those, and now is a full line sales rep and medical device sales, living his best life. So Adam, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so pumped to have you. And it's just fun to see you with all your success you've had. I, I knew when we, you know, when we first initially talked that you were just going to crush it. And it's fun to die, kind of just see what you've done and what you were able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. Um, with the with the listeners, can you kind of just say who you are, kind of tell, tell them a little bit about yourself and also your age? Uh, because I think this is a great one to also put out there for yeah. everyone. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so my name is Adam Gunther, like you said. Uh, came from a background in aviation consulting um, and was looking to really make a change uh, at that point. And so wanted to get in the medical field, didn't know how and landed in med sales. Uh, I landed a first role with a, a inside sales company uh, in orthopedics. Uh, and so that was really a cool opportunity to learn the sales rope. But you know, started at a hospital, I really just diversified my uh, background in what I needed to do to get where I wanted to be. Uh, and so obviously, like I mentioned, I had two job offers in the interview process between the course um, and learning about the course on LinkedIn. And I just turned 25 last weekend. So I love it. <laughs> I love it. In at 25 as a full line sales rep, ready to, to crush the world. And, and what I wanted you guys is just to hear from that is, you know, Adam has a great background. At first, it wasn't anything to do with medical um, and then wanted to get into sales and knew he wanted to take that step. So he went into the inside sales role. Um, but we can kind of talk about a little bit how just that inside sales role and even that interview process is, is different, right? Because people will be like, I want to go get sales experience. But like we talked about that inside sales rep role is a little bit different, but especially the interview process is just so much more different compared to yeah. landing those full line sales rep roles. Absolutely. So when you, when you were going into this, what kind of made you, you know, hey, I, I want to do medical device sales as you were, you know, doing your previous positions and what got you kind of interested in it? Yeah. So, you know, originally in college, it was pre-med, like most kids realized, you know, um, you know, for me, honestly, it was two things. They want to be at school 12, for 12 years. And I could see also in, from an income standpoint, I could probably retire a lot earlier if I went into a different field than, you know, waiting till 40 to start making money as a doctor. And that's not for all people, but, you know, I knew that I would have debt and things like that. So um, went a different route in college and came back because I was unhappy in my, in the world that I was in. And so I was like, okay, how can I get back in the healthcare setting, um, in the business, in, in business? Cause I liked working with client relationships that I had. Um, and so I landed in med sales. So kind of that's how I ended up. And then I did research and just what I needed to have in backgrounds. And I was getting denied by a lot of the big companies when I was initially applying. And so I had, I thought about how can I get creative, um, and of course, it's one of the ways to get creative and to be to be seen. So uh, I love it. And I, I want to just touch on that real quick. So can you kind of tell us what you were doing before the course of kind of like how you were going about it? And then kind of what, what were the letters you were getting when you would get them kind of that kind of talk? Yeah, yeah. So for sure. So, you know, I obviously started just applying and, and really I crafted what I thought was a great cover letter for each job I was applying to and how I kind of related what I was doing in aviation to medical in the sales aspect. Because, of course, I didn't have a sales job on my resume. You know, so it was super confusing as to how I'm doing that. I didn't have a sales degree on my resume. I had an aviation degree. So um, kind of figuring out how to get that passed. And then, um, you know, I just Googled. And then a lot of the things were a lot of the job postings that I was not hearing back from. I was like, okay, well, they want me to have a healthcare related degree. I need to have healthcare experience. Uh, I needed to have sales experience. So how can I do all three of those? um and be creative about it and obviously that's how i landed at, at the healthcare inside sales company that i was at was from that but yep yep i love it i love it and so then can you just kind of tell us real quick when you went through that interview process you're like okay what was it like to get an inside sales interview process was it as long or was it one interview what did that look like to get that inside sales rep role for a medical device company yeah, so I had three one-hour interviews. Uh, I, I worked in person at that that uh, at that job of mine, and so we had three in-person interviews, and then about uh, then I would come back and do an hour shadow with two reps and just uh, get see what the job was, and then I was extended an offer. Uh, so it's, you know, within a three-day process, I was interviewed, hired. Um, 
Yeah. Which yeah a is lot like, quicker. <laughs> I was just going to say, which is way different than like an actual medical device sales rep role out, out field, uh, sorry, out in the field, uh, clinical role, whatever you want to call it. So yep, yep, yep. I, I just wanted to go into detail just for everybody to, to hear that. So then, then again, you and I got on a call, we talked about it, you and your position, you were currently, and you were crushing it. You were doing awesome. And we talked about kind of what the next steps were you, why you would wanted to go into medical device sales and into the actual med device world and be your own rep. And so when we talked yeah. about that, then we talked about kind of the course, can you just kind of talk, touch on like what were kind of the, some selling points for you, like why you wanted to do the, the course and, and where you feel like the biggest benefit was from the course getting you, because when we, when you were in it, it was about six weeks that you were actually in it. But like we talked about, there's only about four weeks that you actually went really hard. Cause you had other work stuff come up in your life. So when the, you actually put it in in four weeks later, yeah. that's when you actually end up getting, we were on the final interviews in four weeks later, getting job offers. Yeah. 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 No, it was, you know, obviously from the time I reached out to you on LinkedIn and then obviously we had that initial call and I, I mean, I was very frank. I was doing really well at the company I was with. And so yep. I wanted to make sure that if I made a, a move into that more, what I desire to be clinical aspect that I wasn't going to see a huge, uh, a change in income and in lifestyle and things like that. And so, you know, through the course, you know, what you would talk about the course really goes through how to navigate that. And with the tools that you learn in the course, you don't, you, you get all these opportunities presented to you if you do it the right way, obviously. Um, it's about putting in the work, which is what I realized after two weeks of just being busy with work. Um, so once actually in the course, you know, I, I didn't even open the, the modules until two weeks in, you know, because I was just dealing with other stuff. And I finally said, hey, I got to dedicate my time to this. I really want to do this by the end of the year. Um, and so I went hard for four weeks. I was, you know, using what the, you know, reaching out to people like the, the course says and, and doing the modules that, you know, on overdrive, you know, I, yep. and I think that was, I was very persistent and, and I was very calculated because I didn't want to leave Minneapolis, you know, so I was very calculated with the people that I was reaching out to or the, the steps that I was taking um, to make sure that th it was the right audience for me. Uh, yep. Yep. And that's a great point. Cause I just want you guys to hear that. That was a conversation when me and um, Adam originally got on our conversation was like, Hey, he was probably going to stay in Minneapolis. <clears throat> and we just had the honest talk of like, Hey, we're going to be strategic, but also it could take a little bit longer, right? Luckily it only took four weeks, but you know, sometimes when we're going to an area compared to opening up the whole USA, it could take a little bit longer. And then also the point I want to really talk about just for Adam's point, like we talk about all the time, the course isn't like, hey, you buy it, it's a guarantee. There's no guarantees in life, right? But the fact of you put in the work, you're going to get the results. And the reason I'm saying that is Adam was someone who put in that work. We were on calls at nine o'clock at night and that's my time. So it's 11 o'clock at his time and he's working on his final interviews. We're going in and we're talking about it. And so that's the thing I just want to say is, you know, when you come in and you're, you're putting in the work, it's not only you guys don't just get the course. I like work. I'm coaching you and I'm helping out as much as I can, but also Adam's taking full responsibility and that's why Adam got so many or two job offers in under four weeks with top companies and is now a full line sales rep is because it's what we talked about left no stone unturned did everything mm -hmm. you were supposed to came over prepared and I just remember that one night that you were going you're like how am I supposed to know this and I'm like you're not good to know it but they want to see what you did to prepare and then you call me the next day and they're like you're right you that's what they wanted they were just seeing what I could figure out on my own and you did everything right and so I, I want to now just kind of transition to the point for you. You know, you are one of the, the individuals who is lucky enough to have two job offers and have two people want you at the same time. And can you just mm -hmm. kind of talk to the point of like, okay, how did you leverage those offers to actually get better offers to where you're at now? And, and we don't have to go into great, great detail. Uh, again, don't have to go specific numbers, but just kind of have that conversation of, you were able to talk your way into and leverage that way of getting a higher base salary and getting and getting compensated better um, in several aspects and just kind of talk through that process, what that kind of looked like for you. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I think it's important. I think, you know, I was in a position where I wasn't necessarily needing to leave uh, where I was at. And so what for me, I was really looking at was obviously compensation in terms of money is super important. I mean, I think that's a big aspect of why we're in sales also with the fact that you really have to appreciate healthcare and patients getting better. Um, and so knowing that I was comfortable where I was at, I wanted to make sure that it was monetary as well as lifestyle. I wasn't going to, yeah. you know, go backwards and where I was progressing through life. And so, you know, I, I had honest conversations with both 
uh, of the places that I was interviewing with about where I was at in the interview process with other people. And I think when you, and I don't want to toot my own heart, but I think when you make a, a point of that you're, you know, you're good enough for the job and you can do the job and you're at that point. Um, but also knowing that you, there are other opportunities too that can come up and if this isn't the right one, it's okay. So having those conversations really helped boost the process forward faster with kind of getting what I needed on the other end from them. Um, it was just being persistent, but also not being too eager to jump in, you know, because yeah. they, you, you, you go through this whole process. It, the process was, you know, I started interviewing three out of the, uh, four weeks I was doing the course and finally you get that offer and you're like, okay, I'm ready to take it. But you're like, no, you got to take a step back and you really got to evaluate, you know, hours worked versus, you know, total compensation packages, or are you working weekends and nights or, you know, are you getting any reimbursement packages with T&E being so expensive right now? Um, and so that's kind of where I landed where I'm at. Yep. And that's such a great point. And I, and I want you guys to hear that the, the point for Adam right there. And it was the same for me when you put in the work and you are very confident, like same thing. I was a personal trainer and I wanted to break in. I didn't need the job, right? Like when, when, and, and there's a big difference when we talk about this, when you're needing something and you come off needy, I always bring it back to the relationships, right? Cause it's always, it's always easiest for people to get it and understand it that way. If you're going with somebody on a date and they're very needy and they're like, when are we going to date? When are we going to be together? When are we going to do it? It actually pushes you away. It actually is like, oh, well, why are you so eager all the time all the, to just jump in, right? Do you have nothing else or do you have no other options compared to you're like, hey, I'm selling myself to you, but you got to sell yourself to me. This, gotta, this has to be the great fit for both of us, right? Because it is, it's a working relationship. And so when you can come in that realm, that makes a huge difference in the interview process because it also, they can see the confidence. But to, even to your, uh, to your point, Adam, like then what would happen is you would get an offer well, then when you already had somebody else who wanted you, you can go talk to them about their offer and be like, hey, this is what mm -hmm. I just got offered. And I, I, re I really enjoy your company. I want to be with your company. But it, it financially, there is a point that I have to uh, make sure that I'm not missing out a lot on the table. And that's how you were able to leverage several times to get yeah. a much better compensation and a better just package overall. And so I just yeah. wanted to really touch on that for all the listeners because you know, so many people will come in and they'll just be so eager to just jump on the first thing. And when you come off needy, it can actually like push people away, can push companies away. But when you're like, Hey, like yourself, you've been performing, you're already doing great. And you're like, I don't need this. If you want to pass on me, like that's, that's fine. That's good for you. But whoever, and it was the same for me, whoever's going to take a shot on you is going to be really happy. They did because you know, you're going to come in and you're going to perform for them. Yeah. And it's a balance for sure. I mean, I think you know, don't like I definitely was at the edge of my seat on the other end too, waiting anxiously because, you know, I wanted, I knew where I wanted to be two years ago when I left my aviation role and building up to get to this point. I was, you know, this is, this is it. So I knew that I was very excited too. So I think part of it is, you know, obviously leveraging the other offer, but it's having honest conversations because at the end of the day, our jobs are about relationships. So, yep. you know, I created a relationship with hiring managers that I might not even work with in the future. Um, by just having that honest conversation about, you know, here's where I'm at. I, I like both. I like, you know, I like what's going on here, but these are other things. So it's also not coming off too pushy. You know, there's a, a very fine balance with, I had a steady income, you know, I didn't want to leave Minneapolis, but at the same time, I, I was still searching just as much as they were. So. Yep. That's a great point. I love that. I love that. So the one thing I want to just ask is, so people are going to reach out. They always do. And I've been hearing more of our guests and it's great. I love that people reach out, but so when someone is going to reach out to you and be like, Adam, hey, I don't have sales experience or I do have sales experience, right? Because you did both and you had, yeah, went through this. What's your advice to me? You know, what, what are you like? They're going to reach out. They're going to message you. They're going to ask you to get on a call. And just being honest, like we've talked about this a million times, guys. I hope people can respect to this point is like you take a new job. Like Adam's a full line sales rep. He's busy. He's, he's got a life as well, just like we all do, right? So you might be reaching out, but that's why we make these podcasts is again to give you all that information and hopefully that this gets it again, if he has time, he'll reach out and we'll give him the opportunity to put his stuff out there. But uh, again, I already know they're going to reach out. So Adam, what would you say when someone's like, Hey, what's your advice to someone trying to break in like me? You know, I think uh, uh, a magnitude of things, I think start really analyzing what your skill sets are in relationship to sales, because you might not necessarily have a sales job, but if you're working with anything with numbers or relationships with customers, even if you're a server and you manage the relationship for an hour and a half, how can you leverage that experience? Um, and then two, you know, obviously I took the course thing that's extremely helpful. I think that'll help to give you more tools to understand. And then third, I think it is reaching out to people. I think it is learning their perspective, but then applying their perspective 
Um, you know, if you're going to reach out to people, also expect to put in the work, you know, put in the time, um, because if they're going to take the time out of their day to have a conversation with you, which a lot of people did for me, and I was grateful, follow through with them on their commitment level as well. It's always a commitment level in relationships, and you need to understand what that commitment level is at. I love that. And I, that last point is so good. And I'm going to touch on that real quick for everyone to hear is that commitment level. They're like, I know Adam sacrificed stuff out of his life to make it because those people did the exact same thing. And that's the conversation I have with a lot of people. They'll reach out even to myself. And I'm always happy to get on calls with people. But actually what happens is they'll be like, I'll call them and they'll message me or they'll get on the phone and they'll be like, Hey, I'm actually at the gym. I'll talk. Can you call me back in an hour? No, I can't because this is what worked for me. And, and this is, again, this is not being a, a rude sales rep. This is, I'm a very busy person, just like everybody you're reaching out to. You're the one who's asking for advice, whether it's me or just I'm talking as a normal sales rep. And so when that person calls you, like I've said on this podcast a million times, the amount of times I've did a, I did a 12, mil, a 12 minute workout because I just started working out and then somebody I reached out to called me and then I just stopped and sacrifices because I asked them for their time. That's the sacrifice we're talking about because everybody's asking. They're like, we want to break in. I'm willing to do whatever I can. And then somebody calls you and you're like, Hey, mm -hmm. call me back when it's convenient for me. Right. Yeah. And then those are the same people being like, I can't understand why I'm not breaking in or why I'm not getting interviews or why I can't even get things. Because like you said, it's a relationship and people reps and people are reaching out, they can tell the commitment level. Right. And so you were willing to do whatever it took and, and making sacrifices to make it work with them. And also just who you are. And you guys can tell like, Adam doesn't mess around. If he says he's going to be on a call at nine, he's going to be on a call at nine. You know, like he being very strategic and being very, Hey, this is what I said I'm going to do. He did it, followed through. And that's why he's at where he's at. So again, Adam, I just, man, it's just it's fun to see you. And I, I just want to say congratulations to you because to, to watch you through this journey. But I, again, from our first call, I knew you'd do great, but to watch how fast you did it again, I want you guys to all know, like, you're going to hear Adam's story and be like four weeks, I'm, I'm going to sign up and I want to do it. Right. A yeah. lot of times it's not four weeks, right? I, I'm very real with people. But again, Adam was, again, there's positions open and he worked his butt off. And as you guys can tell, he's a very well buttoned up guy who doesn't mess around and comes prepared. And there's a reason why he got those offers within four weeks of each or four weeks of actually going hard. And I just want to say congratulations, man. I know you're going to do awesome in this field and excited to watch the success you have. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's been a it's been a fun ride, and I appreciate your help and the course's help. You know, it's been it's been fun to watch, and it's crazy to look back at, you know, what what fall looks like. You know, we're going into fall here. It's like, wow, it was a crazy summer. You know, but so I appreciate all the support and all of the time, and yeah, it's exciting to see where the future goes. Yeah, and and I I do just always want to put that out there. If people want to reach out to you, is there a link or an area where they can reach out to you at? Yeah, you know, LinkedIn or, you know, my email, uh, you can email me anytime. I think my email is on my LinkedIn. So, you know, just reach yeah, out. Just, Perfect. We'll keep it just to the LinkedIn and make them actually do the work uh, if they, yeah, if they exactly. really want to do, do an email. Uh, but no, <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate your time. And again, thank you just so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and just want to say proud of you, man, and, and excited for the future for you. I awesome. appreciate it. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah. And thank you guys to everyone who's listening. If you are watching on YouTube, press that like and subscribe button. A five-star review helps us grow this podcast. If you guys are interested in learning more about the course, the link is in the description. It's courses new to medical device sales. If you guys are interested in just getting on a call, reach out to me on LinkedIn at Jacob McLaughlin. Uh, new to medical device sales on Instagram, TikTok, basically every social media you can ever imagine. Um, we're there. Again, I'm happy to jump on a call with you guys. I go over everything. Um, and again, at this point, we have over 113 episodes. So if you guys have a question, that's a general question, I can promise you I have answered it. Um, and so just go through those podcasts, go through those YouTube videos, and you can check it out. But again, always happy to connect. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the support. Keep working hard, get after your dreams, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.